This is the Stock Trend Reality Podcast, episode 161. I now have zero debt. I put away four years of overhead into a savings account. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. He thinks you're a crazy person. If you live in Miami, play trader. Yeah, you are an absolute madman, mad woman, mad person, mad whatever you want to call it, to live in Miami. After having gone down to the South Florida for a, a meetup where we hung out with other members of the community, uh, one of the days we went to Miami, and it was just, I, I've never seen anything like it. It was crazy, the traffic, cars on the road, twists here, twist there. It was just not my cup of tea. Now, granted, we still did go at the one point during rush hour, so that probably wasn't a great call on our part. But even another time when it wasn't rush hour, it, there were still a whole lot of cars out there. Um, so yeah, I, I in my opinion, if, if you are Miami, South Florida, I, I think you're kind of crazy. And that's just, uh, it, it is what it is. As I bring in our esteemed co-host, Chez, here, he's probably going to be like, what are you talking about? Miami was like a walk in the park because he used to live in um, Southern California for a while, which is probably puts Miami like whatever. But I am actually curious to ask you, Chez, how does Miami traffic compare to, you know, the, the whole LA traffic scene? Because I know you have experience in both. I mean, you go to any big city and the traffic is, I don't, I haven't been to one big city where I've gone and went, yeah, they really got this traffic thing figured out. There's just too many people on the road in those big cities. So it's, I want to say it's definitely up there. Our drive wasn't even that far. Um, I've been in a lot worse traffic. And I mean, even, even here in Denver, if you get a truck that rolls over and blocks all the lanes, like, yeah, you're not moving for five hours. But I will say this, while Clay, you might think they're crazy for living in Miami. They probably think you're crazy for living in Michigan, probably because of the weather, though. They're probably willing to deal with the traffic for some nicer weather than you get in Michigan. But that's whatever I'm just saying. Yeah. I'll hit them in the face with a snowball. Come on, Miami people. <laughs> let's go. Bring it. Bring it. No, that's that's it's all a matter of perspective, I guess, when you're used to it. But I swear, I mean, Chicago is pretty miserable. I mean, but Chicago is Chicago. But I don't know. Maybe I was just super excited that I want to get to Top Golf, so it just was exacerbated the amount of traffic. But I don't. It just it just felt like Miami was on a whole other level, and just. But that is a good point. Any big city, it it, it kind of just is what it is. But anyways, I still think Miami people are crazy. Today we have a, a great, or tonight, or whenever you listen to this, but. A great, great interview, and in fact, it was so great that it turned into a two-parter. So uh, about halfway through, you'll hear my voice again, and I'll unfortunately cut in, and uh, we'll just have to wait until the next week. But we are talking with Phil from the community. PH1 is uh, his number or his alias in the chat room. And uh, yeah, a, a enthusiastic guy, uh, a passionate guy. Somebody that's just, uh, he, he's going full bore, and that'll make more sense as we get into it. Uh, but yeah, he, he, he loves what he's doing. He's enthusiastic about it, and so much so that we're going to start off the interview, and it's not really one of our typical things. I mean, when Chez and I hopped on the, the, the call, he just, he just pretty much came out of the gates firing, and we just went with it. So I mean, yeah, when, when we cut from now until the interview, it won't sound quite like the, it normally does, but that's just because... The guy's an enthusiastic guy, and Chez and I were like, hey, this is nice. We're, go we're going with it, and going with it ended up leading to two separate episodes. So without further ado, let's get to part number one and hear about Phil and his journey. Phil, how you doing? Very, very, very good. Uh, just, you know, again, both the guys on the phone, and even, you know, if Nate's on listening to, is thank you guys, all of you. Um, you know, I do listen to the podcast. Uh, I do, uh, um, you know, and that's why I wanted to do the podcast. Number one is that I feel like if I do the podcast, I'm kind of saying to the world, this is what I'm doing. And now it gives more. Uh, it gives more power behind it, number one. And number two is that I want to give back. I've gotten so much from you guys and all of your awesome members that maybe there's one little thing that I can 
say that somebody else will get back from, and that would make me feel good. Um, uh, it's tough for me to be a part of the community because I'm too slow. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll work on that later on. So I, I guess then if you want to leave it all as a, a, a a mystery. It's, it's a little bit of a crazy story. So good. We back. like crazy around here. Yeah, we well, like crazy. Kick so back, I, I guess, guess. Phil, where, where did all this start for you though? Let's just kind of start back at the beginning. Um, I mean, what, where do you hear about the market and what got you interested enough to even want to kind of, to, to throw yourself into it? Uh, okay. So it was 2009 and, uh, I was, you know, I've always been in different businesses. I've always been, you know, uh, uh, trying to figure out who I am and what I want to be. And my dad got sick. So we kind of split up a lot of the different duties of what, you know, he had been doing. My sisters took a lot of the taking care of the health and all the other stuff. And I tried to take care of, you know, some of the things he had financially. And he turned over his Schwab account to me. And that was the first time I really saw or knew anything about the stock markets. So how, I mean, you don't have to tell me the amount, but it sounds like you didn't know anything about the markets and then poof, just like that, you all of a sudden had a brokerage account at your fingertips. Is that, am I understanding right? Well, uh, yes, but of course, obviously I didn't want to do anything about it until I kind of figured things out. and. One of the first things I figured out was, you know, hey, dad, where did you, why are you in this stuff? And he said, oh, well, you know, so-and-so at one point said this and so-and-so at one point said that. And I was like, wow, because, you know, he had lost value in every single thing that he had. Um, so I said, listen, I'm not going to do anything for a little while, but uh, um, here is a, a situation. What I did then at that point is I said, okay, listen, I got to worry about my mom. You know, what can we do? And I started doing some research. My research, though, did not take me to penny stocks. My research, I kept looking at what Warren Buffett was doing and what some of these bigger guys were doing. And so I went and I subscribed to, I don't know, 15, 20 different paper newsletters for guys that held uh, um, uh, portfolios. And I would get them every month. I would get them in and I would open them all up and I would lay them all out and I would look through them and I'd see, hey, look, five of these 10 have AIG. That must be a good one. Uh, six of these 10 have uh, uh, Ultria, MO. Uh, you know, and that's how I basically then sold off all of it, what he had. And again, it was, you know, uh, at this time now, it was, you know, close to the 10, you know, it took a year or so before I started actually doing stuff. And, you know, so I figured, okay, I'll open up a small account too, so that I can, you know, trade alongside with him because this looks like a pretty decent thing to save money and put it away. And I was very, very lucky. There was days where the market was like dropping 400 points and I would buy uh, Abbott Labs and then later it split into Abbott and AbbVie. And, you know, so I just, I really, you know, I, 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 took, I took their account from, you know, like 50 grand to 150 grand in a couple of years. Um, and now oh. it's just kind of plateaued and leveled out. Sure. Well, I, I still think it's pretty cool that uh, that you had looked into kind of what funds and stuff were holding and at least started to use that as a basis. And I also want to just commend you for the fact that you asked your dad his strategy, you heard about it, and you're like, ooh, I'm going to you know approach this differently. So yeah, um, I got to just chime in there too. Yeah. That's so much better than what I did. Hey, I'm going to get in the market. Let's go to, let's listen to random strangers on internet message boards about penny stocks. You're, you're oh. Well done. I mean, that made so much more sense than. Well, I uh, think I, you have to remember, I, I lucked out. It wasn't my money. And it was. But it was still your thought process. So you got to give yourself yeah, okay. some credit. Yeah. And I was really worried about my mom. I was like, you know, I don't know what. My dad was a school teacher. So it's not like we had, you know, uh, um, you know, huge amounts. And uh, I was just worried that, you know, you know, after he was gone, how is she going to do? So, uh, so, you know. And at the same time, you know, I never really thought about the stock market. I was at the time into uh, real estate. Um, I was a construction guy and I would travel around and I would do these big projects. And everywhere I went, I would buy a house. And then after I left, I'd rent it out. Um, 
And then in 2011, I also decided to get into private lending because, you know, everybody was flipping houses at the time and I didn't have the time, but I wanted to be involved. So I took, I flew out to California, took some courses and, uh, you know, really started, you know, building up. And then I guess things kind of, uh, uh, 11 and 12, um, as things started, you know, calming down a little bit and I was looking to do more, I started looking at the stock market then in my account. And that's when I met, uh, triple D printing, SSYS, Stratasys, and, uh, those were some of the things that, you know, um, they hurt me. I got in um, at the top and they would plummet really bad. I don't remember the numbers and stuff, but that's when I said, okay, you know what? If I'm going to trade, I guess you call it swing trading because I wasn't mm-hmm. doing what my mom, you know, what I was doing for my mom and dad, I should go to school. And I did. I paid over fifteen thousand dollars and went. You know, it was a week, the hotel, the whole nine yards in the classroom, um, and it was it was awesome. Clay, do but, we dare ask who he uh, did this through? Uh, o- T- are there o- initials o- potentially O T A? Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. And, now, was fifteen thousand? Uh, was that their top tier program, or did they try to no, up- upsell something no, to you after that? They, listen, that's that's the name of the game is always upsell. So even at the $15,000, that was only the first portion. First portion? Oh my goodness. Chaz, well, I no, gotta no, raise no, hold, prices, hold, man. Hold on, well, yeah, that is- an extra zero at the end of CTU. That is something that, you know, uh, um, you, know you, should, you, you should take into consideration, but here's the thing. They, I believe that it doesn't make a difference. It's up to the individual person. I've been in, seven different schools, uh, you know, for, for trading. Um, and, and I think what I finally learned is that you really have to decide to just do one and stick with it. And for me, when it came around to the CTU, what I liked is by this time, of course, you know, a lot of other stuff had happened because you got to remember that after I in 2013, when I took my classes and I did that, I now had, I don't know, four or five different houses that I was renting out. I had two or three uh, deals going on. Uh, I had just gotten engaged uh, to the first woman I ever really loved. And uh, we saved up a bunch of money. We got her to you know finish up her CPA. And then she got this really awesome job. And we got everything all set. And... The whole world crashed. Um, I lost a whole bunch of tenants. I had one house that was over three thousand dollars to carry every month, just for you know uh, uh, mortgage and taxes and insurance. I had a a, a private lending deal go bad that ended up three years and a hundred grand later. Um, She left me after you know like the second week. I just quit my career to start trading. And the whole, everything just fell apart. I went from the top of the world to I lost everything. Uh, I was negative in money, my savings, everything was gone. So I had to let, start. Let me, o- let me ask this, just because I'm a real estate guy myself. How, what, how big was your portfolio with, um, as far as, I'm assuming rentals, I don't know if they were seller financing or whatever, but you had, like I said, uh, rentals we'll call it, and then you also had private money deals. I mean, how, how expansive was this little empire that you had for yourself? Uh, so let's see, uh, I had a house in Long Island. That was my original house. And that was the one that was the most expensive New York, Long Island. I mean, the taxes are are, are crazy. Um, and it was a big house. It was, you know, horse property, a block away from the largest equestrian park. So it was an awesome house. Um, but it's, I, all I found out was that I was just wasn't, I couldn't be a landlord. Then I had, uh, one in New Jersey. I had one in, uh, uh, one in Pennsylvania closer to Philly, and then I had a double in where I am now. So I had two, three, four, like five houses, and at that point I had three three deals in private lending. And all I was doing was they were flipping the houses. Yeah, you're a hard money lender, right? Oh, that's it. And what kind of fir- interest, well, I just out of curiosity, what kind of interest rate were you charging? Uh, I think it was anywhere between 13 and 16. Love it. Did you make them pay uh, points? Points up front. Yeah, uh, hard money lending. That's what I want to get to. That's that's my longer term goal in real estate. I don't want to do anything. I just want to be the debt. That's all I want to be is the debt and private lending. 
what I learned about private lending is that it really demands about the state laws. I went out to California, and that's where I learned everything. In California, if somebody defaults on their mortgage, you could just take the house back. Well, I had a house in New Jersey that I couldn't even take the house back. It had to go through foreclosure. It had to go through sheriff sale. It had to go through so the whole like, process. So that's like, what, the six-month-to-a-year process then, right? It was, it was over a year, plus over the attorneys. Over a year, wow. Plus the attorney's fees. And now I'm stuck with this junk house in, in a crack area uh, that every house on the block was for sale. Um, yeah, it was a mess. And so I also then learned, you know, and this the the recurring theme that was happening for me was that Every time I have somebody else to count on on the other side, I get screwed because I count on them. Now, I would go into a house when I would fix it up. I would spend 100 hours in one room just with spackling it because I'm a perfectionist. And then I'd be like, what are you doing? You're going to rent this house out and they're going to destroy it. So I just it turns out I can't be a landlord because I expect people to be as good as I am. I couldn't be a private money lender because, you know, one time getting screwed over. And I know that's part of business, but it was just something that I couldn't deal with. So I kept going through this, geez, you know, uh, every me, time. Just out of curiosity, yeah. and you, can, you can tell me, mind your own business, but correct me if I'm wrong, when, when this private money deal went bad, this is when all the other, you know, it was a when it rains, it pours type situation. Is this when the rain was pouring, when this private Everything. deal went wrong? Everything. So I mean, do you think, and like I said, this is just me curious. I mean, do you think if you would have tried again when it's not pouring all around you that maybe, uh, you know, it, it would have been easier to survive and stomach. Because yeah, like you said, you summed it up. Bus that's just part of business. That's the cost of doing business. But I mean, do you think that you may might have a little different perspective on it had it not been pouring all around you? I loved it. And what I plan on doing eventually in the future is that if you break up the companies and you set up a structure differently, I will do private lending, but only to myself. I will do private lending to a, my real estate company that, you know, maybe will buy the house or buy the apartment complex or do something that way. Um, uh, but to, you know, I'm trying to eliminate other people. And the last podcast I listened to, the fellow Dan, um, I was laughing because he's like, and I hate people. I just can't, you know, and that really. Uh, um, so after everything crashed on me, um, I had to. I sold everything off. I just dumped it all. Uh, and I made some mistakes, but at that time I just needed to, I didn't have a job. I quit my career. Uh, so I had no income. I had all this money that was due every month, uh, including l legal fees. And it's not like I was even, I was in Pennsylvania and the house that I was having the legal problems with was in New Jersey. So it's not like I could just hop by and check this out or check that out. So it was, it was, uh, it was kind of crazy, but I had... Um, the, just I, I want to back you up, because yeah, right? yeah, in, in sure. case the listener's like, come on, suck it up. I will say this. I've had to take back a couple of my properties, and this is all happening like in the same city. And it's still just a massive headache. It's annoying. So I, I can't imagine for you, Phil, where you're having to deal with all that, being in a whole different state and everything. I mean, I, I, I totally, truly do. I, I get it. I understand what that feels yeah. like. Well, I don't quite get it, but I can only imagine, given how it feels when I, I go through it with somebody that's you know well within the same radius of where I live. So uh, that's crazy. But I, I get, and we we could have, we could have a real estate podcast just because this stuff is so fascinating. But let let's I'll try to bring it back to trading. So where it, it, when it right. rains, it pours. It poured. I mean, you were. I, I think fair to say you were pretty much at rock bottom. When and where did trading kind of start to, to, to come back into things for all this? Okay, and that's when, uh, like I said, so when everything kind of crashed, I had to say, okay, well, what are you going to do? So I took the properties that I had. I said, what's the cheapest one for me to live in? And what's the best, you know, what'll give me the best? So I had bought a double. Uh, I guess you know what a double is, right? Um, yeah, duplex. Two, yeah, yeah, two five-bedroom houses right next, you know, with one, you know, wall that, you know, in between the two of them. Um, it was a great location. And before I had quit my career, the reason that I had bought this double in the area I was is because I was setting myself up. I had, they had asked me, I had been asked to run a, a very large land development project. So I said, if I'm going to run that, I want to have a house. The market was at the lows, So I was able to buy this double. So I said, you know what, sell everything else, move into this house, and then maybe throw your hat back in the ring and maybe you can get 
to run this job again. I didn't know if it was too late. Then I said, now you're going to have to figure out what you want to do with your life. Um, you know, I'm at the point, I think I just turned 50. So it was like, you know, you got to figure it out. No more playing around. You can't be a kid. So I'm a whiteboard guy. And I had whiteboards, you know, all over the place. I ended up getting that job. Um, I took awesome. on... Uh, well, yes and no. Uh, it just helped solidify. But I spent uh, over a year, maybe a little bit more than a year, just trying to figure out how I wanted my life to be. What do I want my life to look like? And as I started listening things down, uh, the pros and the cons, every time there was a con, it had something to do with other people. So then all of a sudden, I'm like, well, trading has nothing to do with other people. Maybe I could trade. So I started, uh, uh, again, from coming from all, you know, a, a business owner, uh, I started making up a business plan. Um, I developed a business plan. I developed a personal plan. I developed, you know, uh, um, Clay's going to start crying over there. Uh, I heard he am. D- different goals of, of where I want to be, uh, how I want to get there. Um, and then now I have a map. And so I guess it was uh, in the end of 13, the beginning of 14 and stuff, um, I was doing all this planning and I started rebuilding. Now, um, I was supposed to take five years to do this particular project and, you know, I only got paid by the month, you know, every month that I, I, yeah, I ran it. And like t- the typical thing that guys do is they make a deal with you. And then they double the workload, they double everything, uh, um, and take more away from you. So you're actually making less. And this is what, that's what ended up happening to me. At the end of the project, I saved them over three and a half million dollars on the project, and I finished it up in three years. And there was four months that we had to close because of winter conditions. So it was almost two and a half years I pulled off of five year project, uh, one, two, three, four, five major buildings, roads, infrastructure, uh, all kinds, of, every utility. Uh, it was quite an undertaking. And uh, at the end, I was getting very, very frustrated. I was a miserable person uh, because nobody out there cares anymore about what they're doing. And I know you have a lot of uh, uh, people in the inner circle that are tradesmen and stuff like that. And I think even you, if you do construction work or you see construction, nobody cares anymore. And as a perfectionist, it was just driving me crazy. I would yell and scream and it's not who I am. Well, so, it makes sense why you would like something, you know, more along the lines of trading where you're individually responsible for everything and there's pretty much nobody else you can blame unless, say, your brokerage had a problem. So I can understand why you'd start to gravitate towards trading. It's like the first paragraph of my trading plan. Uh, you know, I have to figure out who I was of my business plan anyway. Uh, this is who I am. Um, and this is why trading would be it for me because it allows me to do that. The other thing is that. I like to travel. You know, I want to spend the summers on the East Coast. I want to spend the winters in the, the, the desert, Nevada. Uh, so I can, I'm a snowboarder, and this way I can just drive an hour and I'm in Utah. Now Chess is crying. So yeah, I'm, I've been tearing up too ever since you said the word snow. <laughs> oh, it's just, uh, and I can't, I can't handle the East Coast snow. I'm an actual, I ride, you know, I'm a half pipe guy. Um, so. You can't do that on the East Coast, especially once you've been out West. Were you just at Whistler Blackcomb? I was, yeah. I saw the picture, and I even commented. I said, God, that looks just like Whistler Blackcomb. Um, yep, one you of my, nailed it. It's my fav- one of my favorite places. Park City is obviously number one for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, so so now I have you know all this stuff going on. So in that time, I saved up. I paid off all my debt. I now have zero debt. I bought all my state-of-the-art equipment to trade with. I bought everything that I could possibly need. I put away four years of overhead into a savings account. And four years. It, it's actually not, it's in it's in better than a savings account. It's in what's called a bank on yourself plan, where it's a whole life. It's a special whole life policy that allows me to borrow the money, but I still get credit for it. So I still get dividends and interest for the whole amount even though I, I borrow from it and use it. So, um, Did I hear that right, that you have four years of essentially living expenses covered? 
starting from the beginning of 2017. I've already used one of them. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. That's I so mean, awesome. Around here, we're, I mean, Chez, we usually tell people like, yeah, I mean, you usually want it six months to a year. I mean, to give yourself that yeah, mental but cushion, but four years, also, that's awesome, man. And you, and you had paid off all your debts, so. Um, I knew that was the only, uh, th that was the only way that, you know, and listen, it things is the have only happened. Way. You're absolutely right. Uh, things have happened. I had my transmission go, and that was four grand. I had, you know, some, some stuff I needed on my shoulder, and that was a couple grand. So, you know, I had, you know, that you know, all into consideration, um, but I did not, I, I could not work anymore. I could not work for other people anymore. So the last day of that big project was November 30th, 2016. I took the month of December off, and on January 1st, 2017, not knowing how to do anything, basically, I became a day trader. And all I did for the first, oh, geez, three or four months was just show up at work and kind of like open up things. I didn't really trade. I didn't even, I was just trying to set up my paper trading. Um, but I had my account set up. I ended up setting up a new account with TradeStation, which is a little bit more professional than the Schwab. And um, so, and I would I, write I wanna every, make a quick. I want to just make yeah. a quick distinction to listeners out there because I can, I can see what's happening where, hey, well, that Phil guy, he just quit his job and became a day trader in the blink of an eye. Did you hear, and I try to emphasize this, did you hear what Phil said? He had his debts paid off and he had four years of living expenses in an account. So it's not like he, was, he had to make money the first three months in order to pay his gas bill or to pay this or to pay that. So listeners, don't even try to do, play the apples and oranges game by saying, well, Phil, Phil quit his job. Well, consider the context. So sorry to cut you off there, Phil, no, but no, I wanna no. make that very, very clear for listeners because most times, Chez and I would say, oh, Phil, that was not very smart, but you, you're not like most situations. I mean, I've never heard four years before. That's insane in a good way. Um, so pick it up from there, but just remember, listeners, don't fall into the apples and oranges game. Yeah, and the, the four years doesn't mean that I can trade for four years. That wasn't the plan. Um, uh, you know, the first year, I had no expectations whatsoever because I had no clue. Uh, and so what I, I just wrote everything down. You know, how did I feel today? Did I eat good? Did I sleep good? Did I do this? What did I do? How did I do it? And I'm the type of guy that I write things, I print things, things that I read, things that I do, and I just spread them out on a table. And then after a month or two, I start going through them and putting them on piles and they kind of sort themselves. And then it says, oh, okay, well, this goes here and that goes here and these are all strategies and these are all, you know, different things that way. So I started to, you know, put it together. Now, I had been taking the things that I had learned. Uh, keep in mind, I had also done the candlestick charting courses. I had done the, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, I went through probably 500, not 500. That's an exaggeration. I told myself a million times not to exaggerate. Uh, <laughs> I probably well, was, we'll call you out if we think something is a little too exaggerated, okay. but you, you did a good job of calling yourself out there. Uh, uh, chat rooms. I tried every chat room in the world, but you know, I just, I didn't know who I was as a trader is basically what it was coming down to. And I knew well, that in your first year, right? Yes. This is all the first okay. few months. This is all the yeah. first few months. So I probably didn't even start actually paper trading what I thought or considered to be a strategy until January, February, March, April, like May-ish. So in I, I I paper traded for May, June, and July, and then the uh, the second week in July was the first time. This is 2016, uh, 17. This is the first time that I actually went live with money, and I guess it was. Mm, I think I traded the first one full week, and then the Monday afterwards, and that was six thousand dollars gone. Um. And I was, I got so upset. I was trade station. You screwed me. I called them up. I want out. You guys are nothing but garbage. It's, you, you, you stole from me. I was so mad. Uh, and I blamed everybody. So I got my money back. I closed everything down. I'm like, now what am I going to do? And I said, why don't you first take a look at what was going on? So when I was paper trading, I had built myself up. I wanted to be a scalper. You know, that was what I kind of had seen. I was trading on a simulator 
5,000 shares, 10,000 shares, and I'd make five cents in seconds. And like by 9.40, I'm up $3,000 <laughs> on paper. And I'm like, this, I can't wait to go live. Yeah, well, oh, that's when you learn about liquidity. That's when you learn about, I also would place the order and check this out. I would, let's say, and I'll just use the numbers for example, I would say, give me a thousand shares at $10 and then sell the thousand shares at $10.15. So it would hit the $10 and I would get 800 shares. It would go up to $10.15, never take me out because it wasn't a completed order. It would come back down, take the next 200 at $10 again and go down and hit my stop and take me out. And I, I was, it wasn't Welcome to live market conditions. It wasn't Trade Station. It was me. I actually later on called up Trade Station. I apologized. I said, "Listen, I was, I was a fool. I made a mistake. It had nothing to do with you guys. It was me. Can I come back?" Um, <laughs> and, and they said, "Absolutely." Um, but that was like the first thing that really, you know. Last year, that was July of last year, and after, like I said, six days, I lost six grand. I, I got a, I got a quick question because early you had mentioned you'd gone through either like seven or nine different trading schools, trading programs, whatever you want to call it. So was that all before you started paper trading on that demo and then going live, or is that still to come? No, most of that had been done, um, you know, prior to that. You know, okay, that was okay. a lot. A, a lot of the, the the heavy schooling was done before I went in the first time. So now, of course, comes the doubt. Okay, maybe I didn't learn enough at the last one. Maybe I didn't. And so then, you know, after that couple of week, you know, that one week, and I'm down six grand. I'm like, now what are you supposed to do? It's like, you know, so I stopped. I didn't trade for uh, um, August. I set up a new platform. I went to Centerpoint, which had good borrows. That was the other problem that I kept claiming was wrong with, you know, all the all the shorts that I did simulator. Well, they weren't available when I started trading live. It was right. like you can get shares uh, as much as you want on the simulator. Ah, right? very very frustrating. So again, I thought it was the platform, and uh, when in doubt, look in the mirror. So. What, uh, just out of curiosity, what platform was it that your uh, demo account were you using? The simulator in TradeStation. Okay, so FYI, just the simulator, I'm, I'm not saying they do it on purpose or anything like that, but it is a bit deceiving in the sense of it sounds like you had anything to short that you wanted, but then when you uh, went live, it was not the same. Am I understanding that right? That's absolutely correct in one part of it, and the other part was, you know, uh, um, just because I put 10,000 shares in and just because it swings past the price. I mean, I can't tell you how many times now that I'm live and I'm in it, you know, and you talk about it and you're, you know, all the time how, you know, my stop was at or my target was at, you know, uh, 1792. So I'm in front of the grandma number and it hits 1792, but I don't get filled. That's part of real trading. Yep, uh, but, on the, but on the simulator, if it just hits that, you got all 10,000 shares. <laughs> uh, but just... I want to I want to I commend you on this though, and it's a larger overarching thing because it just really stuck out with me. When in doubt or things aren't going your way and things just aren't working, look in the mirror because I, I just love the fact that you know you originally started blaming the broker, realized your mistake, totally realized it was on you, and just flat out took responsibility. You even apologized, which you didn't have to do, but you're a good person, so you did do it. Uh, yeah, um, I had more to. people need to take responsibility, and and I've found personally over the years just. Mo many things you want to blame, oh, the external this or external that. Most of the time, it's something you did or something that got you to that place and whatever it is. But yeah, responsibility is what a lot of people don't want to take. And I think it applies to so much more than trading. But I was just so happy to hear that you had kind of recognized that in your own trading. Yeah, yeah listen, I have done more self-evaluation, you know, than anything else. And, and, and I still have issues that, you know, I'm counting on you guys to help me fix. Um, so, so as we continue, the, uh, uh, we're starting to come in. Now I have this new platform uh, and it's this center point and it's this DOS platform and I hate it. I, I mean, I just can't seem to make it work even with hotkeys and all this other stuff. It's what I'm currently using, but at least now I'm 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 trying this simulator and I'm working on this simulator. I went like a, a, a two months on that simulator, 
and then I started trading again. And the first month I traded, I didn't lose, you know, I traded a whole month and I was down like two grand. And it wasn't too bad, um, but I started realizing, you know, again, I can't, I have to, I have to do things and print them out. So my journaling, uh, as I call it, reconciliation. At the end of my trading, I, uh, um, I, I print out, you know, the my time in sales. Every time I bought and every time I sold, what time it was, how many shares, that whole thing. Uh, then I print out, you know, obviously my totals for the day, and then I'll print out every chart of uh, uh, in one minute, so I can be specific about locations. Um, and then I go through it. But, I, you know, until I have a bunch of that, you know, down, I can't really see what the common mistakes were. So I went back to trading live. And like I said, the first month I lost a couple of grand. And when I look back then at the end of the month, NVIDIA got me. I was trading 500 shares of NVIDIA. And it was like, you can't trade that big, uh, especially with a, a volatile stock like that, um, you know, because you kept getting hit. So then the next month, um, I'm, I'm sorry, is this still yeah. scalping? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay. Uh, still scalping. And I had a one-to-one -one ratio, you know, a one-to-one -one ratio because I was, I had, a, and I still do, I still have a 75% win ratio. So that I have an edge. Uh, um, where I ruin my edge is, is, is the one bad trade. And of course, last Friday, I made this dumb mistake and I stopped trading and I went to my emails and I watched your story and I was like why couldn't I watch that story before I had the day because it was the last day of the month I had a good month and I said to myself all you got to do is make it through today yeah that didn't work so then the next month I made 1200 bucks so I was like okay you can do this something's going right here then the next month I lost like four thousand dollars and I said okay stop and that was December uh, I said, stop, it's not working. You, I gave you a year, something's got to change. Now, throughout the course of the year, I had been watching, um, I liked the podcast. I listened to your podcast, and there's one other podcast that I like too, which he doesn't do as many traders anymore. Um, but I like, I like to be in the room with you guys when you're interviewing these other people because I'm right there I'm like oh I hate when that happens and I'm like yeah 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 how did you get out of that you know I'm right there with you guys and I experience a lot of the same things that I guess everybody does that, which shows that I'm no different than anybody else we all have to go through it so uh so yeah I just said you got to do something what is it going to be and I had been you know I had uh, uh, um I liked, I like the way you trade. You trade the way I like to trade. You trade, you know, the way you talk about things. It's no, you know, and anything that you said, it wasn't like half of the 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 the, the video was a plug. Uh, that really turns me off. It's like you know, there's so many out there that they'll just start to talk about something, plug their product, talk a little bit more, plug their product, talk a little bit more, and. Uh, you know, that just tells you what type of people they are. And that's not what I wanted to be involved in. And as with. a businessman, you can see right through what their business model is at, at that point. Uh, well, as a bad businessman, because I've been suckered into it so many times before in the past, too, you know? <laughs> you Jeez, you personal learn, accountability. Just, you nailed it again, man. Oh, I oh, love it. Just, oh, Phil, you're my hero, man. That's Talk about uh, well, your self-realization, you listeners. We have a great example of it. That's good stuff. Well, you're the only one. I'm the only one who can change it. I'm the only one who can make it better or who can make it worse. And, uh, you know, so, you know, like I said, I was going back and forth and, and it was like, maybe I should just get the shorting class. Maybe I should just do this. And I said, you know, that's dumb. You, you know, part of my, you know, one of the things that people also don't realize, this is a business. And the beginning, the first day of every single month, I'm $500 in the hole. There's accountant fees, there's extra internet fees, there's platform fees, there's data fees, there's subscription fees, there's uh, uh, education fees, and there's replacement equipment fees. And that's even just a little bit. 500 really isn't enough. So when you start you know, realizing that you have all these things, it's, it's, you, you have to figure out what's going to be right. And I couldn't do it on my own. So I said, okay, I'm going to be the first one to sign up for CTU in 
2018. And it would have been at 120101. But my credit card at that time of the morning thought that there was something shady going on and texted me and said, hey, you, you can't spend $2,000. I said, it's me. Let me do it. They said, okay, run it through again. So I think I was at 1205 on the nah, first. That's late. That's late. I I'm hate sure to tell you, but you were the second person of 2018. Oh. So that was a – no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure you were the oh, first. You were absolutely the first. Absolutely so. the first. I sat there and waited because at 59, I could have pushed the button and I waited. So I would have been really upset if you would have told me I was number two. No, no you're not, number not one that for I'm aware. sure. But I just, so. so this was all just a, a mental game you're pretty much playing with yourself? You, you, you just wanted to kind of show yourself that you were making a huge sign of commitment? Is that what was kind of the symbolism behind that? No. The symbolism, okay. <laughs> the symbolism behind it was that I had been taking pieces and pieces and pieces and pieces and pieces and trying to put them together. You are the first one to admit that you, you don't tell us anything really new. You don't tell us anything that hasn't been discovered before. You don't have – there is no magic wand that you can wave at the markets. But my theory was is that I can start – from the beginning, and I did. So I, what I, my, of course, in December, I planned how I was going to do the course, and the way I was going to do the course was January. Uh, I was going to do basically review, and the review was uh, the penny stock survival, uh, uh, the the robotic trading, and the skill sharpening. Which, by the way, um, was my favorite. The skill sharpening. Um, you know, you and I argued so many times during my skill sharpening. <laughs> it was it was incredible. So you, uh, I, I assume you printed out the guides and did everything like you're supposed to. Is there any other way that uh, if you don't, then you're not doing it? I'm sorry. It, that's why I always. That's always you my know? little secret question I ask people. Is I say, oh, I did that course. I said, did you print it out? And I don't call them out on it. Maybe I should, but if they're like, no, I just kind of did it in my mind. I'm just saying in the back of my head, you're already cutting cool. corners. That's not a good sign, cool. but. I can't say I'm shocked to hear that you did print it out, especially if we were getting in arguments. So who, who won those arguments the majority of the time? You did. <sighs> you happy you but, did. Yeah. Good job, Clay. Uh, you beat up on the new guy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, good. No, good. No, yeah. no, that, no. The I'm guy that signed around. up at twelve oh five AM. Yeah. Good <laughs> you, good job, you Clay. Did, on on New Year's, while everybody else was out partying. Um you uh you you haven't finished beating me up though you know uh, I plan to get beat up more um, that's why I try to participate on Tuesday nights um, and 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 I'm right on Tuesday nights it's just that so uh, go step stepping back um, I went through those three first and for me that was all basically a rehash but what I wanted to do is I wanted to put it in your words uh, and don't get me wrong I picked up a bunch of uh, little things Penny stock survival, I didn't think I was going to because I really don't get involved with penny stocks, but I did because there are some low float biotechs that I've seen do the same thing. Okay, here's the news and here's the change of the guy and yep. uh, 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 and it was just amazing. It's psychology, to, right? It was amazing to see. I took that information and then I went and looked at, at stocks and it's like, God, jo like clockwork, it's exactly what they happen. Oh, uh, uh, we're going to try, you know, we're going to go, we're heading in a new direction because that's the hot thing. And then, you know, okay, now we just change the leadership because this guy has, you know, uh, uh, an in in that, in that sector or whatever. And it's like, it's, it's all, and then of course they're just dumping the stock and dumping the stock. So... It was good to understand what was going on there. Uh, and like I said, the reason that I wanted to go through that was to kind of get uh, uh, to be in your classroom and not just step into the part where it was new to me. So now I had a feel for how you did things and how you worked and the, your phrasing and how it went. And then I started the RVR. And the way I went through RVR was I would print out just a couple of the slides, you know, basically the one that would give me the rules and then, you know, a couple of the other things. And I would print them out and I'd put them to the side. And I liked the ninja uh, 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 trades that you did at the end of each one better than the, the, the winners. Not that I didn't learn in the winners, but I really liked the ninja ones. And we argued a little bit on some of those too. Um, 
I think I won a couple of those, by the way. Um, now, I, I'm curious because I'm, I'm not offended at all, but what exactly were you arguing? Maybe in terms of, oh, no, you shouldn't have put your stop there or no, what, what part you, were you arguing about? So it was a ninja trade. So you it had to fail. And I just felt that and sometimes you would do a poll that was way bigger. There was no way you were going to get that private profit margin and you would have never done that on the other samples. And so I knew you were doing it as a, you know, just to try to, you know, stress the point. But it was like, you have your stop uh, at sometimes you'd have your stop at like, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, a dollar and your target at seven dollars. And I'm like, you know, that's just, you know, sometimes and I knew it was just to make the point. But like I said, those are, and I'd be like, come on, Clay, you would never do that in real life. That's wait, That's not the spot that you would do the poll on the other sides. So it's just that kind of stuff. But it was good because. I was. Able I, I like. I like feedback. I really do. So yeah. you you under you did understand that the point I was trying to stress. It didn't come. Across, I mean, it sounds yes. like you got that point. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. always looking to no. improve things. So if if there's something, but it sounds like you understood the point. You were just arguing more so out of passion because you're just passionate about all that stuff. Is that an, an accurate in, interpretation? Yeah. Uh, yes. But like I said, I just felt like you know a couple of the examples. Um, you, it had to be a loser you know, because that's what you're showing us was Ninja Trades. Yes, a true. And, and that had I done the, the calculator, I would have used, a, I would have been a lot more conservative because of, you know, what was going on. You know, like I said, it was just, uh, um, and you could just calling too. you out on an example that was like yeah. really blown out there just to kind of make the point. But and, it's and, just, and, I, right. I agree with you, Clay. It's out of passion, straight up out of passion. Okay, and, and and please believe me. I, I wish I could train and, and like you, you you're guys. On the, you're and, on the live yeah. webinars on Tuesdays, like you said. When I, when I always ask a question, everybody giving me your target. You'd be amazed at some of the numbers I do get. So first off, I'm glad that in your mind you're like, no, 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 no. But in some people's mind, I've learned they need to see ex just things like that for it to click for them. But uh, right. I, I'm I'm glad that you understood and you just thought, no, 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 no you know. But like I said. You'd be surprised with some what some people see. You know, everybody's perception is so much different. That's why I always like that question when I ask it on those live webinars because it's the gamut of answers is just like, okay, yeah. that's uh, you're much different than Phil or you're much different than you know such and such. But anyway, that, what that's makes good the world stuff. go around. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things about the uh, um, uh, the Tuesday nights is that you'll ask a question, and I just. I'm trying to figure out what the question really is. And then when I finally figure out what the question is, I'm like, oh, I, I, now I know what you're talking about. And it's not that you're asking it wrong. And that's when it comes down to, and this is why, so I've, 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 I've tried to teach some people to snowboard. And I, I'm, I'm pretty good at you know, explaining to people how things get done. But one thing that I've learned is that uh, you can, 10 different people could say the same thing. But the 11th person says it just a little bit differently. And that's what you connect on. And so that's what I was hoping and, and that's what I've been getting from CTU is this is the 11th way that somebody's telling it to me, but you're telling me the whole story. And that's why I wanted to start at the beginning. I didn't want to take, you know, uh, um, Dan last week and talk about the guy, David Frost. He basically teaches you one little strategy. Well, there's the before stuff and the after stuff to keep trying to learn the stuff in the middle wasn't working for me. And so I wanted to do something that would take me from beginning to end. And that's what CTU offered me. And that's the reason why I had gone through it. And so now, you know, after, you know, I've been through RVR, I've been through, you know, the shorting course. So um, from January until now, you've gotten through all these courses, right? Uh, yes. Gotcha. Uh, keep in mind, I, I have nobody else that I have to uh, you know, I'm single. Uh, I'm in an area now. I moved to this area. I don't have any family. I have nobody you got around. Got some time. I have. I, so I do this seven days a week. Um, I, I'm. You know, I work. This is. I have to get this. This is the rest of my life. You know, I'm not. This is my new career. So now, uh, um, I love the case studies now. So because every each one, and I, I printed out all the different case studies, the the list of them, and I write notes. Uh, uh, next to each title so that if I need to go back and look at something again because I like the way you showed the level two work on this or I like the way you showed you know uh, how you explained uh, the fade or whatever it would be um, and that's what I've been kind of go going through you know at this point 
So um, I have started, I started again trading January 1st, but I made new rules. I was only allowed to trade either five or 10 shares. That was it. That was the most I could trade. And I know why, I, but explain to listeners why. Yeah, tell the people because this is just brilliant. Well, I I've, I've already told you. I had a week and a day, and it was six thousand dollar loss. I had a month that was two thousand, and and it was like at, at this rate, I'm gonna. I'm going to take my savings, the money that I've put to allow me to stay in this and do this for a long period of time. I'm going to have to take that money and put it in. It's crazy. I know. So luckily, my 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 platform is very inexpensive. Uh, um, it's you know a minimum of ninety five cents each way. But for basically two dollars and twenty five cents, that's my total round trip cost up to 100 shares basically but i'm only trading 5 and 10 shares so i can survive so i can figure out what's i've slowed it all down you're a snowboarder first time you go off a jump a big jump on a snowboard or skis or a motorcycle or anything man it is scary it's fast and you're so glad that you're still alive when you land but by the tenth time you go over that jump, I'm changing the music in my iPod. I'm adjusting my jacket, maybe do a nice grab, and then I make the Winking landing. Winking at some curls on the side. Yeah. yeah then you land. So I'm trying to slow the whole thing down, and that's what my that's what I started 2018 doing. So, um, and, but and remember, listeners out there, he does not have to trade five and ten shares. He can trade thousands and thousands and thousands of chairs and he is willingly doing this to get through what I would call probably the more painful, you know, just getting into the deep of it and the thick of it and just honing everything and he's just going to become super comfortable with execution and correct me if I'm wrong, you probably have already a plan to scale. You probably already have specific goals or targets or time frames where you're like, well, if I feel comfortable by this month, then we'll go to 50 shares or 100 shares or something like that. I Considering how much you're a planner and have business plans and are just so methodical, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you got to have some plans for growth as well. Well, that's the whole. So what I started doing was uh, January. I just did it, and I think I ended up uh, uh, like four hundred dollars down, um, which was fine because one hundred and seventy-five of that was platform fees because uh, I'm not trading enough. So uh, I was like, okay, very good. I also went through. I was. I still had a seventy-five uh, uh, percent win ratio, uh, but I still had. The that one big loss, that one big loss, that you know, couple of losses that that killed it for me. So now comes February, and I said, okay, now I'm going to start incorporating a lot more of CTU stuff into what I'm doing here. And it's it's been a little bit of a difficult transaction. See, I'm used to scalping, so I'm in at you know a price, and I'm only looking for ten or fifteen cents at a one to one ratio. And now, I finally found. Well, you know what? Can I talk about the problems I'm having before I talk about any of the successes? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So my problem, and I think this is really, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys can help me out with some kind of idea how I could do this. I know I have a stop now. It's very difficult to put a hard stop in in your head, even when you don't know what your entry point is going to be. Again, the, t the time that I have success is when things are out of balance, which is when you have a huge spike up or a huge spike down. I want to catch the little bit of the bounce up from there. That's, you know, because there's, there's something is out of balance at that point, and that's where I want to. And, of course, in the CTU, you've shown me some ways to, hey, are you sure it's really out, way out of whack? Absolutely. Um should, I, I'm not supposed to talk about uh, uh, specifics. No, go ahead. Go ahead. If people try to reverse oh. engineer all this, they're going to oh, get okay. themselves slaughtered. So, uh, um, and that, yeah, you know, uh, the price yeah. of freeloading is not free. So let them try to apply this. So speak freely. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, right. So everybody's been warned uh, um, that, you know, so I use the Keltner. For some reason, I was I always used, had the Keltner. And you're right. It's way outside that. So, you know, I started incorporating some of the things that you were showing me just to make what I was doing better. Um, 
And then I, as I, you know, was going through the shorting course and I did the same thing and I printed everything out, I started now, I can't do a watch list because I'm scalping, I'm day trading. I need to know what's happening today. And so now as things are happening, the first thing I'm doing is, well, is it, is it this strategy or is it this strategy? Is it that strategy? And I'm trying to figure out which one of the strategies, either the five shorts or the three longs, which one it is. And I'm trying to place that all together so that I can apply the rules to, you know, let's say it's one of the short ones. Well, one of the short ones has some specific rules in it because my problem is, is that I sit there and today was a perfect example and it's actually even the perfect ticker symbol too because I just sat there and said why why does that make sense to you guys yeah what ticker symbol why why oh why why yeah I did why why today that thing that is uh good. yeah well I went long at the wrong time I didn't get the bounce and now it jumped and I'm like why why and so now I'm stuck like the deer caught in the headlights and I'm like so we talked about up in the the the, the uh, share size, I did so good in January and February with five and ten that March first I was allowed to move to ten and twenty, and it totally messed me up. I got so confused yesterday over it. I made some errors and some mistakes, and then I thought I said I was only allowed to go back to five to ten shares again today, and it was confusing in my mind. And the next thing I know, I'm long thirty shares of YY, and this thing is dropping like a dollar a second almost. So, and that is where we are going to end it. Hopefully, it's a good cliffhanger for you. Hopefully, it's got you wanting more. If you do want to come back and hear the rest of the journey from this point forward, then just make sure to either be ready for 162, or if you're listening back to these in the archives, then yeah, lucky you, you can just skip right to episode 162 because it already exists and you can pick up with our uh, journey with Phil. So yeah, good stuff so far and there's still more good stuff to come. So I'll see you back in the next episode. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com. <laughs>